276. <laughs> Let's do this before I melt. So, welcome to the Northern Knits Podcast. We're two friends in fiber who knit craft crochet and talk everything in between. My name is Jocelyn and my co-host is Diana. And Diana comes to you from the lovely Waterloo, Ontario, and I'm coming to you from the underside of a male member's body part called Winnipeg. <laughs> Guys, I hate summer. I hate summer. I hate summer so bad, and it is freaking forecasted high with humidity today is 40 plus Celsius. 40 plus Celsius. I am a creature of the Arctic tundra. I am a creature of minus 20. I think 15 is quite balmy. Nothing needs to get warmer than that. I understand vegetables do better at like 20 to 25, so I sort of just suffer through it. But we are just after one o'clock, just after noon? Are we even at one o'clock yet? Uh, just. One yeah, just at one o'clock? One o'clock on a Sunday afternoon and it's already 34 degrees Celsius outside. The height of the heat for us is until 4 or 6 p.m. here in the downtown. I'm not done getting warm yet. For, uh, for Fahrenheit, folks, I believe this? 100 yeah. degrees Fahrenheit is like 42 Celsius. Yeah, I think so. I'd, I'd have to somewhere do the conversion check. I'd have to do the conversion check. It's somewhere in there. It's somewhere in yeah. the low 40s Celsius. Is yeah. 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I have an ice pack. So it's hot. Because it's hot. I'm uncomfortable. I'm never going to eat again. So I'm going to have to make a whole new wardrobe because I'm going to have lost all of the weight. Uh, no, that's not true. I am eating. <laughs> it's just not as much just as I probably It's going to melt into a puddle be. on the floor. Okay, listen, we're adding to the grouchy. My kettle broke on Friday and I don't have a new one till Monday. I have to microwave my water to get it hot or boil it on a pot on the stove. That is annoying. Just, I am because having- Because the green microwave water is weird. I am having a privileged existential crisis. I can't have tea, coffee is difficult. I am not happy about it. I am grumpy because I'm hot and I'm sweaty. <laughs> It's just I been live, a weekend. I live in a historic building, so I can't just have my AC unit dripping water out the front end of the building because that is not okay for a historic building. And I agree that it's not okay for a historic building. So I have to dump my AC water every couple hours. This is just, 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 just a very difficult time of year. Just... This is, this is my time. So for all of that chill, relaxed joss and you see at Christmas and in winter when everyone's stressing because it's cold and they're miserable and they're unhappy, this is, this is my depths of winter hell. This is, this is my time of year to just go, I hate all of you, go away. Just, well, I'm pretty sure if you're hitting like 40 Celsius, so this, this it's at least the second ring of hell. <laughs> It's gotta be. It's gotta be. And then you hear about the temperatures in Europe and they're like, Europe's like literally lighting itself on fire because it's so hot and so dry. And you're like, I shouldn't complain. I should not complain. I should not complain. I live in but a at the same time, that air conditioning is considered a thing. It's still hot. It's still hot. And I want and to I'm gripe. so thankful for air conditioning. I'm gripe. very happy with my air conditioning. I refuse to be upset that it's blowing on my arm and making my arm cold. Today I would not sympathize with you. I would not sympathize with I know. you. Today is not today is not that day. And tomorrow One is not looking anything. My back. arm is too cold from the central air in my house. I will I will give you the look. I will give you the look. <laughs> there I know. may be some eyeball rolling. <laughs> I know. I That's heat. why I'm saying it in that voice. <laughs> I get tired and grumpy like I like rub my eyes like a toddler having a meltdown like I just don't deal well with the heat you guys are freaking saints for dealing with me during this time of year because oh my word oh my word oh my word I think I call my mom different parts of the year so between the two of us we're functional yeah roughly (laughs) One's boosting the other, depending on the time of year. It's being the winter. Okay, let's put another layer on. You can do this. And the summer, you're like, it's okay. <laughs> You'll make okay. it. We'll, we'll get a cold drink and then we'll go sit in some cold water. And it'll be fine. Nobody takes me to the beach, you guys. And I can't just drive myself to the beach because blind people don't drive. So when I stopped driving, I stopped being able to go to the beach because no one will go with me. I love the water. I own four swimsuits. I never use any of them because I don't go anywhere to go swimming. 
That's sad. Like just, what? I hate sand. I love the beach. No, honestly, nobody really likes sand. No, nobody really. No, sand is just a thing. I, like, you I have to really do hate sand. Like to the sand the stuck to wet feet thing. Just ugh. that's not the fun part of the beach. That is the part you have to deal with to be at the beach. I also can't really swim. Just that we need to fix. Of the, well, like I know, I like I know how to swim. I just never do it. I love swimming. So when I have water available to me, it's like, well, I haven't done this in three years. So you know, I'm just never in water deep enough to swim in. Oh, until the pandemic, I was swimming four times a week in the morning, doing those crazy early bird person laps at the swimming pool. The last time I was in water deep enough to swim in was in 2020 when we went to the beach. <laughs> it is 2022. Well, pack your swimsuit for November, the Edmonton Fiber Frolic, which we are going to because we are booking a hotel with a swimming pool and a hot tub. Because I feel like if your hotel does not have a swimming pool and a hot tub at a restaurant I could order from, I'm not staying there. I personally don't care if there's a pool because again with the swimming thing <laughs> i don't you know it's just not something i do you will once you realize how nice it is to climb into that hot tub after you've been sitting on your feet for concrete all day oh hot tub yes 100 oh, yes. get yes. the hot tub and i can leave you and aaron in the hot tub doing hot tub things and i can swim in the pool this and is then true. i'm fully within sight of two-sided people who can watch me to make sure i don't drown don't know why i would drown but there you go guys i'm drinking coffee it's a thing oh yeah we should like actually I will oh rant about the summer for as long as people give me space to rant about the summer. <laughs> She's totally uh, what do we got? We got what's in our cup, woolly workings, and wool gathering. We do. But you'd think that would make this short. <laughs> no, never short. No. Never ever short. No. The never only time short. this has been like never moderately short. short is when we had a schedule and we had to go do something after. Yeah, pretty much. That's the only time it is short. When I one of the two of us has to go and there's a deadline. <laughs> That's it. That's the only time it works. If we're just like, I still Sunday, think the shortest this has ever been is like 45 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's because we had a deadline. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> uh, in my cup, actually, I was telling Diana just before we before we pushed the buttons to do the things. This is this cup and it's matching saucer is the last of the China I bought myself when I bought my first house in 2002 when I was 19 in Brandon because it matched with my kitchen which tells you how bright my kitchen is given this is a, a butter sunshine yellow cup with a beautiful pink artsy deco flower on it and uh, it's got some blue details on the handle that I'm currently using to hold and I made super lazy fancy coffee which means because I have to microwave water right now because I'm not turning the stove on today I'm not mm. Mm, if I was mm, if, mm. if I was doing it, it would be to make a whole bunch all at once, and I just wanted a little bit, so it didn't make sense. Uh, I did. I ground up some coffee beans because that's what you do when you're me, and then I actually set up my Vietnamese coffee thing, and this is the perfect size for the Vietnamese coffee thing to go on top. So I technically made oh. Vietnamese coffee today. Uh, nice. Then I decided I wanted it sweet and I wanted chocolate. So I literally put in a uh, chocolate syrup for ice cream and uh, <laughs> almond milk and dark chocolate. <laughs> Look, I made a mocha. <laughs> mm, that sounds really good. <laughs> it's really tasty. And it's decaf, so I can just go make more. <laughs> and I have been craving coffee at weird hours this week. Not for the caffeine, not because I want to be awake. Just it's like the taste. It's the taste. I just want coffee i want coffee taste yeah and i'm like man do i need to get some decaf beans now i mean not all decafs are the same and decaf doesn't mean there isn't any caffeine oh, but i think there's sure. a difference yeah. like 97 milligrams in regular coffee down to like potentially two milligrams in decaf coffee so like there's a huge difference there's, yeah it's it's not a zero amount of caffeine but it's much 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 less I think you're getting a bigger caffeine hit off chocolate than decaf coffee at that point. Yeah, chocolate's I would have like to... five milligrams or yeah, something. Yeah, chocolate's like five, five and up, right? So yeah, so like your coffee, give, your chocolate gives you a bigger caffeine kick than your decaf coffee. So you can't have that coffee taste without that caffeine kick, which is what I need because otherwise it's panic attacks, right? Mm -hmm. 
don't worry i also have my huge old jug of water this is my third for the day it's like the size of my head me I'm too hydrated. i'm hydrated don't worry mine isn't as cool as diana diana's looks like a freaking milkshake i like my milkshake it makes the so water I, more fun it really does um but i also have coffee yeah but you have real coffee in the vein of uh, chocolate coffee, um, my coffee is from Chocosol, which is a Toronto company that does the bean to bar thing. So their big thing is chocolate where it's like chocolate cane sugar and then some of their bars have like vanilla bean or coffee beans or whatever in it. So it's like, this is chocolate with stuff in it and there's nothing else in it. And it's so good, very pricey, but so good. Um, but they also started roasting coffee beans recently. So Listen, life's gotta... too short for cheap chocolate. Life's too no, short for yeah, chocolate. for sure. Um, so I have some of their coffee. And they come to the local farmer's market, so I don't even have to go to Toronto to get this stuff. They just Beautiful. come to the farmer's market. Because if it's corn free, there's a Christmas present for Jocelyn. Oh, yeah, it's everything free. I think I need to just buy a big box and distribute. I will happily take you on is a chocolate coffee dealer not a problem she just shows up in her jocelyn <laughs> coke oh i got cut coffee <laughs> i'll uh, i'll make sure that i bring some chocolate uh every time i visit yes you should <laughs> uh, no do way. you if like i make it stuffing? out there i won't have stuff oh vanilla mint orange i just don't like nuts and berries mostly the chocolates there how do you feel about chili they have a spicy chocolate that's pretty good depends on spicy because you, like spicy. you know my level of spice level which is lower than your spice level might be unpleasantly spicy i'm so not it might be sure. might be too much for me i'll bring okay. some for me and then you can try some and then if you like it you can keep the rest that makes sense cool. Cool. Uh, that's like thing. guys i'm crocheting while we record today so i'll be looking down a lot uh i guess we should get into woolly workings might as well it's a thing it's 40 degrees Celsius. I'm, you're lucky I'm wearing clothes. <sighs> well, I mean, we don't want to, I was going to say get demonetized, but no, we're not monetized. We're not monetized. <laughs> we don't want to get flagged don't for uh, improper content or something. Don't that would be, that would be bad. Though, hey, if you have it, subscribe, hit the buttons, find us on the social medias, do all the things. We love it. And we like interacting with you. And by we mean me, I mean me this is true i lurk hi <laughs> i feel like you're in an AA social meeting. interactions I are hard. diana i'm a lurker hi diana <laughs> <laughs> yeah pretty much lurkers anonymous <laughs> lurkers anonymous oh my gosh okay uh I'm yes anonymous, got... that's how we like to be we lurk it's true it's it's your preference uh you said you had two and i have four so i suppose i'm going first hey uh you are indeed yes Cool. So we'll talk about the thing I'm working on while we record. I have this tiny, 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 tiny little bump of uh, crochet ribbing, which is nice. uh, crocheting through the back loop. So you get this nice little ribbed effect. So it looks like a ribbing that you get when you knit. This is satisfying to do. Knit ribbing, I hate. Point of reference. I am using two of the multiple balls, big balls of Karen Cake cotton that I got from the lovely uh, Jen, who's a friend. Uh, she sent them to me because she's not going to use them. And I'm going to crochet a cardigan and then I'm going to dye the cardigan black because I can't work in black yarn very well. So I've got two literally leftover random balls of cotton. I can find the use for pretty much anything, guys. Uh, and I love it. I love it. I love working at scrap projects. I like this sort of what can I do with this kind of, oh, makes me happy. Makes me so happy. So we've got that going. And I am working on the hem band of another crochet with Carrie Cardigan, her, what is it, bell, bell shaped sleeve cardigan. So I got to make the bell shaped sleeve cardigan, mostly because it's a very simple cardigan, which means I can work on it while we're doing stuff like recording and what I don't want to think. And sometimes I don't want to think. That That's, is the mood sometimes. It is mood. So it means I can uh, pick this this bad boy up. It is a free pattern. You can find it on her uh, blog, Hey, or Crochet with Carrie. And if you don't like ads, you can buy the PDF and not deal with ads. And I'm uh, doing the back hem. And I gauge swatched and I had to go 
I have to hold the carrot cake double and go down a needle size to get gauge. Gauge is important. <laughs> There's it I is, up. yes. So, especially when it comes when to garments. Mine. Especially when it comes to garments, you guys. So, I literally have this bag full. Oh, hey, look, swag drop. You'll know this bag, Diana. You sent me I, this indeed, bag. Indeed, it's, it's, my mind's right there. It's our bag. So I've got three more big old balls of carrot cake in here, and I've got another bag full of small balls of carrot cake. I got a lot of carrot cake, and I'm very excited to crochet the uh, hey Carrie cardigan and uh, then dye it in a pot and have a black crocheted cardigan for myself. I'm thinking I'm going to try to find like fancy like rose gold or like pewter silver buttons or something for it. Wouldn't that be so cute? So cute. Yes, that would be super cute. And very me. That for a second. And very me. So that is, yep. the, oh, I got to go to, I got to do two things. Let's talk about the other crochet thing because we're already here. We're talking about crochet. I like crochet. I like knitting too. I like both. I was working on the Summer Breeze cardigan, which is another, hey, uh, crochet with Carrie. Can you tell we like her patterns? Can you tell we like her patterns? They're good. They're just, they're, they're so, so wonderful. They're so easy is the wrong word, but they're like they're straightforward. She and the writes her instructions really good. well. Very she clear. Uses her stitches well, and you get a really lovely garment when you're finished consistently. Which is not something you can say about everybody you ever meet as a pattern person, and it's a struggle. It's a struggle to write clear patterns. It is hard it as is someone hard. who's writing patterns. It's hard. So. Here is my back panel of the Summer Breeze cardigan. The reason I'm not working on this one is because it's a three row repeat and not one of the three rows is the same. So that requires a little more thought than I'm willing to put into it for a podcast. Fair, fair. Uh, I have decided to make it longer than the pattern calls for because I want a nice drapey, long drapey. So uh, the finished garment measurements for this, I think are like 27 inches from the top of your neck to the bottom of the cardigan and I'm going for 30. I want that extra three inches. Do I need it? No, but I want it so I can wear it with car capris or I can just fold the ribbing up underneath and wear it with dresses and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're going extra long so I've got some versatility for it. Again, I'm using Karen cotton cakes. These cotton cakes were sent to me uh, from Susanna. She's another wonderful friend of mine. Uh, who knows that I love cotton? <laughs> it showed up. Same deal. I'm going to crochet it up and then I'm going to dye it. Not black, different color, but we're dyeing this bad boy. So my back pedal has made progress. I still need to do. Oh, hang on, wait. I did this whole thing where you only have to measure so often with a tape measure because you measured your desk and figured out roughly how long you needed it to be. Because, you know, science. That's what. Two, four, six, eight, I got about 10, 10 more inches to go, roughly. 10, 12 inches. So I'm making progress. Making progress. I definitely would doubt a hook size on this one so that I would have a tighter, denser gauge to it. Uh, it is meant to be a breezy summer cardigan, but the moment I wash and block aggressively this cotton, those holes are gonna get big and drapey. And I have every intention of washing and blocking the ever-loving snot out of this. Like, it's going to be an aggressive block. I'm going to meet it. I'm blocking the paddles individually, and then I'm sewing them together. So, like, I meet it. It's an aggressive block. So it should be nice it's gonna and look big. so good. That's a big, but not daft big. Right size big. Because I don't look good in super over drafty drapey but i look good and just i look good in boyfriend drapey not oversized drapey is that a term like that relaxed work? fit does that work as a descriptor i think that works yeah yeah oversized makes me look like the state puffed marshmallow man which is not an attractive look unless you're the state puffed mm. marshmallow man but the boyfriend fit stuff like where's just yes it's just a little bit baggy yeah just a touch baggy so that's two of four so you're up Okay, well, that works out because I just finished this round. The thing that I am working on while we record is my scrappy, stripy, striping sock. 
<laughs> I'm almost done the foot. Scrappy, stripey, striping sock. I, it's for the alliteration. Do it for the I alliteration. Know, I know. I know. I'm with you. Call it anything else, I'd be disappointed. Um, except the, the yarn, as I have discovered, is not self-striping <laughs> like I thought. It's more of a gradient. Well, you know what that means. Um, you just have to make another pair. Well, yeah. yeah. Honestly, this is only going to end up being one sock. Um, oh, yeah. You don't have enough yarn for that. That should have gotten a yeah, jelly this, roll or a bat. This is enough, it's enough for one sock, um, but only one sock. So I have another set of three leftover yarns um, in purples and grays. Uh, so it's going to get a sibling sock. Okay. Or maybe like a cousin sock. A cousin sock. <laughs> but it's not going to be the same colors at all. It's uh, going to be scrap yarn striped together with different scrap yarn for the toe, cuff, and heel. Okay. And I think these are also going to be shorties. Why not? Because You need shorties. Well, I, but yes, conveniently. But also, I don't think I have enough yarn for anything at all. Because... Again, there's not much yarn left. I'm slightly concerned that I won't even be able to finish a shorty. <laughs> um, which is fine. The point is that they're scrappy socks, so I'll just grab another scrap and um, carry on. But I love how this is working up all together. I'm very pleased with the, with the scrappy and the stripey. So yeah, striping scraps together for socks. Brigitte Joy? Brigitte Joy? Yeah. Yes. Um, and in case anybody's wondering, I'm not following any particular pattern. It's um, a standard. I do mine toe up with a standard wedge toe. I use Judy's Magic Cast on. Um, I haven't decided what heel I'm going to do yet. I'll decide when I get there. <laughs> and then um, the cuff gets bound off with a super stretchy bind off. And that's, that's my vanilla sock. Maybe on social media for the betting pool that it's just going to be the fish lips kiss hill because she'll get there and that'll be her go-to heel and that's just what she does without thinking about it. It could well be. Opening bet is me giggling at Diana. Uh, <laughs> well, it's going to be, it's either that or the um, even heel uh, that I've yeah. been doing on the, on Nikki Knit's sock yeah. patterns. Yeah. Um, Cause that one requires even less thinking. I can see so that. we'll see how much thinking uh, I start doing when I get to the heel and if I start doing one over the other because sometimes I just start doing a fish lips kiss heel and then I'm part way through and go oh okay well I guess I'm doing this one <laughs> I meant That's to do fair. a different one but I guess I'm doing this one, guess I'm doing this one. Right, or maybe right. I could try that um, the mock short row heel because I haven't done that yet and you keep raving about it it's because it's great because you don't have to worry about yard overs maybe I'll try that one since it's such an experimental sock anyway. Yeah, yeah, do a mock Maybe short, do a mock row, short row. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, there, I just decided that's the heel I'm gonna do. Bless you. I guess I could bring over the other yarn, the other sock. Where is it? Here it is. <sighs> yeah, so the other one's gonna be um, purples and grays. Yep, those are not gonna match at all. <laughs> not in the slightest. Um, they match in process only. You would it. Oh, and that is okay. Back to me, is it? It is indeed. Guess what? I finished some things. Finished some things. Yeah, considering how there's not a lot of stash dash left, <laughs> that's a good thing I'm finishing things. In typical Dawson fashion, I don't know where one of them has gone already. <laughs> you already <laughs> lost one? I bound it off finishes? last night and it has a guy that hasn't left the area. Oh, it's there it is. Somewhere. Listen. Ugh. Chest, it's too big. I understand. All right. I finished a thing. I finished a thing. I finished a thing. Let's have the thing. What's the thing? I finished my shawl pattern. <gasps> shawl pattern. Shawl pattern. Ah, it's so big. It's so shiny. I love it. It's, it's so good. I, it's, I can't, gradient. guys. Like, it's longer than my arm span, and I have the arm span of a snowy white owl. <laughs> That's big. Is that, like, blocked and everything? Nope. <laughs> so it's going to get even bigger. Well, this is acrylic yarn, so not so much. Yeah. 
not so I much. mean, the lace might open up a little bit and get we'll a little, get a little that bit, way. but it won't get like, it's not like I did it in like super rush merino that like grows like a crazy creature. Okay. creature. Okay. Uh, no, that, I did this out of acrylic. This is out of two balls of sh- all in a ball. So, which is, if you've ever seen it in Michael's, it is this amazingly beautiful, variegated, sparkly colorway. Cause it's not like 10% Stellino. They just like have a strand of silver tinsel wrapped around the yarn color. So like it is. Yeah, it's like sparkly. It's at least 40%. <laughs> yeah. So it is, it's gorgeous. And I had two of the same color, but I could not for the life of me find a pattern that I liked. So I made one. I made one. I made one. So this is called Pie Made Me. It's the Pie Made Me Show. Uh, because I used the numbers of pi to do uh, my switches and stuff to tell me when to change things up so I didn't have to think about it too much. That makes a lot of sense. Math. Guys, I used math. <laughs> so so it's like three rows of something and then one row of something and then like well, one, one four. close, but I not know. quite because I've got some stockinette rows in here too for texture. Because I definitely wanted to have, oops, let's have it the right side out, so the left side forward. I wanted to have texture bumps. Because I mean, you mm, guys all okay. know me, so you know I'm visually impaired. So uh, what's, what's the point of a shawl where I can't feel what's going on? So I have uh, stockinette rose and garter rose and um, eyelet lace that I can feel. It does look fun to pet. <laughs> It is, yeah, so it's it's so like when I squish things, I can feel stuff because I obviously I don't see a ton of lace patterning, uh, mostly because I don't see that well. But this lets me feel the texture that's going on, which is really nice. And with the constant change up, it's got this really cool thing. And what I love about asymmetrical is when you're knitting it, it's straight and then whoosh, it's on the diagonal. Which just looks so, so cool. nice. I looks so love cool. that. I always look at the shawl and the ball and I'm like, I know, but what I don't know what do to make with it. With it. So what I haven't bought it, but like, dang. Now you can buy good. two balls of a color you like. And you have a big old, easy to do, super drapey shawl that requires no effort to put on because you just drape and wrap and go. Want to get fancy? You just apply it to colors. your person. You apply it to yeah. your, use a cuff thingy and you're to the races. So yeah, no, super happy with how this turned out. It's so fresh off. I have I've washed it, have blocked it, have woven it in my hands. Uh, pattern is going to be released this week, so keep an eye out because I'm gonna take some photos. And when you walk outside, it's like it's like the I'm, it's like Mistopheles farting in your face. I'm just not looking forward to the outside. <laughs> Guys, it's hot. I don't want to wear anything. Never mind stuff on me. Ugh, this is on. where you do the the dramatic where you just like hold it out to the side or you like it's a wingspan or <laughs> you don't actually the wingspan I think, I think i need to go visit uh fireweed fiber co uh miss erin and stand out in her front yard and have her husband take the photo of us because this is more than my wingspan <sighs> yes it's huge mind you the river walk is open at the forks Ooh. so if i get my lazy keister out of bed before it gets crazy so like at my normal time of 6 a.m and like leave the apartment before it's mine i can just walk to the forks construction so there's got to be there's got, of course there's construction it's summertime so i got to do some hopping across broadway which okay that'll be fun uh but i could go down to the river walk which would be cooler put this on and i could take some river walk photos that would be so nice and the river walk is so pretty so pretty so i'm super excited it's open for the season because well flooding every every year that's a thing, guys. Yeah. And it'll look really good with like the little black dress. Or if you're honest, uh, I'd, I tend to be with my red moon bow cardigan in the winter time with this draped over top, just running out the door in my leggings and my long tunic dress skirt things and my boots. I'll be the knits. I'll be all the knits. Because leggings are not pants, but if you wear tunic length dresses, it's fine. So there you go. It's like I'm still folding. It's still not on the screen, guys. Listen. There or got me faster. <laughs> took me long, it took me like two weeks longer than I wanted to to get it finished, but it is done and I'm very oh. Oh, I found a use for those shawl and a balls that I bought that I thought were really pretty. I like it so much. So I'm very, 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 very happy. 
and you guys will we have need, a new pattern shortly. Need many, many, many photos. Oh yeah, I gotta take tons of photos. I because I literally in the pattern it says put photo here. Uh, <laughs> so I need to get some photos done. <laughs> cool. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, this was also interesting to have this much shawl on your lap at 30 degree heat. Uh, yeah, yeah. So imagine that was a touch toasty. But Jocelyn size shawl. Get used to it because that's all I'm making these days. I'm just Jocelyn size shawls. I'm not, I'm done. I'm done. I need Jocelyn sized things in my life. Yes. I believe many people um, think we need more Jocelyn sized shawls in the world because large shawls are drama and drama is great drama is wonderful everybody needs more sparkle in their life uh clothing drama <laughs> to be clear clothing drama we need more of that in our lives uh my uh primary tester did hers held double for a marled look at a more squishy winter version of it so and it's still quite big and it looks so gorgeous like i can't wait for you guys to see this i'm so excited i'm so excited it's going to be up on Ravelry and in my Etsy shop. And I know Diana will have links for everybody because she's a good human. Yes, there will be links. She's good peeps, guys. She's good peeps. All right. I try to be. Now, the other thing that I finished, because I'm absolutely ludicrous, and it's finished enough for Stash Dash, so we stopped. <laughs> do I still need to do some finish? Like it's not, it's not an FFO. Like it's not a finish, finish, finished object. Like it's not like it still needs ends woven in. It needs to be washed. It needs to be well, yeah. locked. I'm, uh, uh, it's finished for stash dash. We're done. And I will deal with the rest of it in September when we've reached that time of year, when you want to start prepping for those things. I'm actually turning it inside out for the first time, like right side out for the first time. Since I put it on to test, <laughs> it's my stanker. <laughs> It's my stone warrior. Look at that Gosh, stone that warrior. Looks so good. Look that looks so warrior. good. I actually had to get rid of two entire charts. <laughs> <laughs> my row gauge is always so wildly off on these patterns, on <clears throat> well, on anything really. Uh, that I, I, I'm still sitting quite high on my neck. It's like, it's not too bad. I'm not putting it on, guys. I don't love anybody enough to put no, it on. No, it's right too now. warm for that. Mm -mm. Too warm. Uh, I put later. it on this past monday at 7 a.m when it was 17 degrees outside good good just yep. long enough to make sure that i had the right measurement to get to the end of my cuff and then i immediately took it back off and finished it i took it mm -hmm. off of my off my lap this is some amazingly beautiful rustic i'm gonna find a better word for brings a little yarn because it's it's so woolly it's just uh oh uh, i know i love it it's winters and snow and hot cups of cocoa and like cross country skiing or you I have know, a whole taking box a of walk. it here and it's hurting me every time I look at Ugh. it but I can't cast something on with Ugh. it right now I got a whole especially because half of it's yours well don't cast on with my yarn uh I've got a whole <laughs> cubby full of more brings a little so like more brings a little is coming to you guys because I really love this yarn uh and it's just just look at that just look at it Bask. I just like sit and pet it sometimes because I just Bask love the, in the feel glory of it. Of my red winter sweater. Okay. So now, good. why is it not a finish, finish, finish? Listen, I have not kitchened my armpits together. It's like, look at that big old hole. Wait a Woo! This is not ready for wear. It's not. It's no. Not, not ready. For That's, wear. Uh... But I'm not going to. And you can't make me. It's finished for stash dash. It can get a nice picture taken. It can go into the thingy. And then you know what? I can kitcher this together in like, if we're honest, two weeks before Christmas when I actually want to wear it. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, we're finished. So that is two big honking projects because I absolutely made it longer than the pattern called for because I like long sweaters. I am a taller person. Mm -hmm. So I think it has you... Has the body at like 15 inches or something from the underarm yeah i made mine to pattern and it was almost cropped on me and i'm a very average height i made this until when i put the body part of the pattern on my person it went to my butt so like 22 inches so like i did 22 inches from the underarms yeah i think yeah 15 sounds right for what the pattern said and yeah. it's like mine just comes to my hips but it's like almost edging towards cropped 
grab. So this is out of, again, the Briggs and Little. So we've got this lovely white cream color, which I think is just like a washed white. And then a uh, burgundy, some dark red, dark red. Uh, so that'll be two twin sweaters. No, wait, we've both done cocoon cardigans. We both have stein mm -hmm. triggers. Mm -hmm. What is the other one I'm thinking we, we both have? Uh, eight bit when I'm not done, done. yeah yeah when I'm done my eight bit oh the patchwork the patchwork patchwork uh eight bit but I'm not done mine yet you're not done your patchwork and your my patchwork Sina. is already living with my niece because she liked it so there we go Two of those. I should finish something someday <laughs> <laughs> I, I finished nothing. I didn't make any promises about Stash Dash this year, and that's probably for the best. <laughs> probably. However, not been I, in a finishing place. I, uh, your turn. Uh, my turn. Oh yeah, I have a thing. <sighs> you have one left. I have one left. I have been working on our summer knit along thing, the Fossil Frenzy Tea. Yeah. Um. I have a neckline and I have the short rows at the back and I have placed markers for raglan increases and that's the extent of it. So this is a top down uh, tee, I guess. It's not really a sweater. Um, trying to spread this out so that you can see the pretty fabric it makes. Pretty fabric. I'm still very excited about this colorway for this. It's so small. Thing. You need to make a bigger swatch for me to see, dear. Mm. How's that? You can almost see that it's sparkly. Oh, man. I swear it's sparkly. I believe you. I look forward to seeing more of it done up because it will be easier to see. And then, and then I have dinosaur stitch markers that I've put on it. Good. That Sherry sent me. <laughs> Along with a dinosaur bag. Along with a dinosaur bag. Um, yeah, so I don't, I do not have very much sweater yet, uh, but it's getting there slowly. Once you're, once you're past and into the body and you're, and you're, and you're going to be closing the distance to that color work, it's going to progress so much faster. Yeah. Because yeah, you're going to yeah, be for excited sure. for that color work. You just need to get past the, I, uh, the increases. I found my other skeins and I wound them last night. Oh, good. And I started striping in a second skein because it's indie dyed and, you know, you don't want color blocks necessarily. Or I don't anyway, that's not what I'm going for. Um, but I started striping them together just before I started the short rows, which was maybe a mistake because it was a little bit challenging <laughs> to do short rows across the beginning of the round, striping two colors together. <laughs> it was a little annoying. Ooh. But I did it, and I think it looks okay. Oh, cool. Okay, this is why you count, people. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm going to rip back now. Oh. It's fine, it's crochet. Okay. Can you tell where I stopped counting the seven? <laughs> uh, I actually can't. Right back here at the beginning, because we just, whoop. Ooh. Got real small? We, yeah, we went down to six. I need to have seven six so you can see that there's actually color differences in these ones um like this one's a little bit lighter this one's got more green in it and then this other one is darker but it's all the same yarn yeah but that's okay just do the what you're supposed to do yeah. with the yarn which is alternate your skin yeah, just stripe it together and it's fine but yeah yeah illustrating the differences in the same yarn oh yeah it's all so pretty i love it so much i especially love this dark one i kind of wish they all looked like that one <laughs> But anyway, it's going to be gorgeous and very slightly shimmer. You can see the shimmer more in this dark one, maybe. Maybe the camera will pick it up. Eh, you might have no, more luck when you've got more going on. It's just such a very slight amount of shimmer that you can't really tell. I promise you, the shine is more apparent in real life. The sparkles, it's very nice. I'm going to have a sparkly dinosaur shirt and I'm excited about it and it has dinosaur stitch markers and I'm excited about that and there's just dinosaurs and I'm excited about it. Yes, I'm three years old. There's dinosaurs and I'm excited. 
Okay, so we've been friends long enough. I understand that you love dinosaurs. Uh huh. Love dinosaurs. So I'm not, I'm not shocked by this. Just making sure everybody watching understands how much I love dinosaurs. She loves I could make a job dinosaurs. out of telling kids about dinosaurs. You can. That's like dream job. Science communicator at a kids museum. Yes. Dream job. Oh man, do you know what I could do if I could do anything? Like if, if I didn't I didn't have vision restrictions, if I wasn't, I'd be a librarian. You know I'd be a librarian. If computers didn't exist, I probably would have become <sighs> a librarian or an archivist oh, of some I'd sort. Be, I'd be I'd be a university librarian. <sighs> you need visual acuity for that, guys. I don't have it. Or a museum curator. Because I also love would be very cool. I love I don't know if detail. I'd want to curate, but like, okay, so we'll start a museum. You can curate, and I'll just excitedly tell everybody about the stuff. Totally fair. Uh you need again, you need vision to curate because you need to be able to visually identify the things that you're curating. <laughs> but it requires you to be a jack of all trades in the histories department because you are curating everything from Ming vases to Native American totem poles. And it's your job you just, to locate, authenticate, help work with restoration departments. And it's essentially, it's a paperwork job. It's, it's a detail oriented data spreadsheet paperwork job that lets you look you at just, really you cool You just create based things. on what feels neat. It feels cool. Therefore, yeah. this is, goes in the museum. You help with the people who build the displays and you find those little bits and pieces of history to pull in for something. It just, ugh. Oh, and when people are like do a personality test see what job it is every time it's museum curators just the top of the list followed by librarian <laughs> i'm like i know oh trust me i know i know both of them require you to see and i don't see so they are not jobs i can do which <laughs> is aggravating because uh would be my happy place would be my happy place people oh man in my victorian walking skirts oh man yeah and I had 100% knits. Ugh. wear Ugh. like Ms. Frizzle dresses to oh, do gosh, the stuff. Yes. Absolutely. And so people are, if in case you're asking, oh, Diana, why don't you just go and do that? Because it pays nothing. I can't, <laughs> I have a tech salary and I can't afford to buy a house in this market. I at least want to be able to pay my rent. Yeah. Yeah. It's very limiting on what you can do depending on what degree you got. <laughs> Deep side. Disappoint. Disappoint. All right. Now that I've restarted my ribbing. <laughs> Whoopsies. Learn to count. Jocelyn, learn to count. Your life. We got, we're got wool gathering. We do have wool gathering. Hey, look. Is it time for the unscripted Patreon ad? It uh, is. Hey, we've reached that time of the podcast where Diana gets a word from me, which was the cut you just put in there because I was just giving her the word and now she has to figure out how to put it in a Patreon ad and I have to look down and studiously not giggle like a crazy person uh, or this isn't going to go well. This, this could go okay. Cool. okay. Um, well, if you would like to financially support these shenanigans, you may do so at patreon.com slash northern knits podcast. I sound so very sure of myself. Um, all Patreon members. <laughs> She's trying to be supportive. <laughs> all Patreon members get access to our, <coughs> excuse me, patron only Discord server. Stop laughing at me. Oh, God. Patron only Discord server where we are active at all hours of the day and the night. I'm just I'm just gonna hold my hand there so I can't see you laughing at me. <laughs> um, what was I saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, higher tiers of support. We do a uh, monthly e knit in. Um, we do those. That's words. <laughs> <laughs> this is an uh, absolute hot garbage fire. <sighs> The next Patreon e knit in is next Saturday, or I guess this Saturday, um, July the twenty third. I almost said June. 
<laughs> it's July the 23rd. This coming up Saturday, just a few days. Uh, we also do movie watch parties quarterly. So the next one of those is coming up on August the 27th. Um, things always start at 1 p.m. Manitoba time. Oh, those two things happen on Saturdays. Um, noon. And our next noon Manitoba monthly time. Noon, what? What did I say? Manitoba, we said one Manitoba time. It's one water. Oh my gosh. It's noon Manitoba. <laughs> I am a mess today. <laughs> Perhaps I need to uh, stick my head out the windowsill and get some fresh air. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Recovered. Okay. I don't remember what I was saying. Oh, yeah. Uh, our next monthly live episode is going to be on Sunday, uh, August the 7th at noon Manitoba time. Always noon Manitoba time. But I'm in a different time zone. And that messes me up every Fair time. Enough. Fair enough. Was there anything else I had to say there? Nope. There's stuff. <laughs> Go check it out. Patreon.com slash Northern Knits Podcast. You can see what you get in each tier. There's different levels of stuff. Some tiers get vlogs. Some tiers get after hour gaming. After hours gaming is fun. We did the first one of those yesterday. We did. There Mysterious was... Mr. B joined us. Yep. There were, there were guns and swearing. It's because you guys kept abandoning me, which is totally fair. <laughs> And you kept triggering combat kept when dying. I was so far away. I was like, well, I'm not participating in that. Well, and then the bad guys came and camped on our spawn. So we just kept uh, dying. I know that was not fun. That was not fun. All right. It's not um, fair. Not fair. As always, we super understand budgets. Totally a real life thing. If you cannot financially support liking, subscribing, following us on social media platforms and engaging with us on Instagram, in the Facebook group, and in the YouTube comments here is a great way to talk to us. And yes, if you want to leave a comment for Diana, I will track her down and make her reply to you. Don't worry, I'm on it. Mm -hmm. Professional like lurker, cat. but I, I do respond when called. Like a cat with a box. Don't worry. My box. I got it. Got it. It's my box. I still can't get rid of the box that that yard was shipped to me, that Jun shipped to me, because Phaedra likes it too much. <laughs> like I move it close to the door to take it out and I get the look. It's like she knows I'm going to compact it down and take it out, but I'm not allowed to. No, you're not. Giant no, her empty box. box. Giant empty yeah. box in my apartment. Okay, you know what? I kept the box that my desk chair came in because I fit in it. <laughs> I wanted a box for it. <laughs> I have a box for it, okay? So what you're saying is you understand. Full of other cat. boxes right now. That was the condition on which I got to keep my box fort box. We had to put other boxes in it. We had to put other boxes in it. Okay, okay, that's fair. Uh, on the bright side, because we're only just running the one cow right now, which is the summer solstice cow. So until the fall equinox, you have time to knit or crochet or craft yourself something that fits into the summer solstice thing, which is something you would wear or use in the summer. It is that broad, people. The only thing, as always, no baby stuff. And that's just to keep the playing field as, as level as we can sort of manage. So while there's still a size differential between extra small adults and like 4XL adults, it, at least we can take one extreme out of the equation. So uh, any adult sized garment or socks or hats or you get the idea. You get the idea. As always, if it's unicorns, dragons, or dinosaurs, it's a turtle. It counts. I'm going to say yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say yes. So there you go. There's your freebie. And we have until the fall equinox to get your stuff in. I had initially thought to do the Dingley Dell. I've changed my mind. I'm doing the Summer Breeze cardigan now. This is normal for me, guys. I always <laughs> change after I've decided what I'm going to do. It's this. I don't know why I say I'm going to do a thing. It doesn't work. We've already way. bought yarn for the fall one. So like, you can't change your mind now. You'd think. You'd think it's crochet. Yes. <laughs> it's crochet, so at least it'll go fast if I change my mind and do something else too. All right. On the bright side, I think that's it. I think we're good. Oh, your next check in with Louise. Oh, You're doing your mid month right. motivation this week, right? Mid month motivation is this week. Yes. Yeah. So this Thursday, I'll be live on Louise's channel, which is Wildflower Wool. And we're going to do a mid month sort of motivator, AKA remind me, Louise, we don't have that long to learn next check in. Uh, time to start power crafting. 
uh, for everybody. So we're gonna sit down and chat for about an hour, hour and a half. I mean, last time we chatted for almost two hours, that's pretty quickly becoming the standard norm because it's just fun. It's just the two of us chatting and chatting with with chat and stuff. So it's just, it's it's a good Thursday night knit club is what it is. It's really what it's become, which is uh, amazing. I lurk sometimes. Yes, I know you lurk sometimes. <laughs> Professional lurker. Uh, oh well that's it that's all i've got cool i think maybe that's it then sweet that works for me it's kind of warm so i'm gonna say until next week i'm jocelyn now i'm diana and no matter where your week takes you don't forget to knit don't forget to knit